It's okay. <laughs> that's that's the problem when you put the large gallery setting on. You really can't see faces clearly. So it, it's, you know. <clears throat> so as we come together, um, one of the topics for our meeting today is going to be the synod that will be beginning. Um, actually, in October, we will begin our synod process. And Pope Francis, in calling for the synod, is going directly back to Vatican Council II. And the synod prayer is actually the prayer of the that was prayed at every <clears throat> section of Vatican Council II. So I thought it would be a good way for us to begin our time together this afternoon by praying the prayer that we will be using all through the coming year for the Synod. So let us place ourselves in God's presence and pray as we always do in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name. With you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path. Your partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and may not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you who are at work in every place and time in the communion of the Father and the Son forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Holy guardian angels, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. If I could ask everyone to mute her or himself, um, and if I could ask Nelsa, if you have a question, if you could type it into the chat, and Nelsa will be fielding those questions for us. Um, Nelsa, would you wave your hand so I could see where you are on my screen? Thank you. I just found Nelsa. <laughs> I wasn't um, lost, Father. <laughs> thank you. So as we come together to begin our catechetical year, it is a grace to see you all, even if we're still virtual. However, it is our hope that by March we will be able to be gathering in person. Um, that will come up a little bit later when Nelsa presents and talks about the annual Sadlier Gathering. We are really hoping that we are going to be able to host this event again this year. Hopefully, we were able to have very good catechetical Sundays in our parishes and that our programs have, done, have begun. Now, I know some are waiting until October to begin. That is fine. The schedule that we provided was based on the new academic calendar for the New York Public Schools. And you will notice if you get a chance to see that calendar that there are a lot of new holidays that have been established uh, to respect varying cultures. So it was very difficult for Nelsa and myself to come up with 30 catechetical days plus five that could be used for proximate prep. So each parish and so you as leadership need to adapt those days as you see fit. Our recommendation is now to go longer. It is the only way we're ever going to be able to provide more time for our religious education programs. And it seems that we have all more or less given in to the first communion. They're not going to come after sacraments. So we really have to be creative in devising ways to draw our families 
to the community so that they want to be there longer. That really is our challenge. And, you know, we were kind of doing two years this year. We were doing the year of St. Joseph, and at the same time, we were doing the year of the family. And in the midst of COVID and Joseph and everything, the year of the family never really took off. But at the beginning of the year, the more we can do in terms of family life ministry, it would be a wonderful asset for our parishes, just to plant that seed in the back of your minds. And I can read your faces and you're all saying, oh, good, one more thing to do. Uh, it, yes, it's one more thing to do. However, the more we can combine faith formation and religious education in terms of family catechesis, really the stronger we are. So if your parish has formed, there are wonderful supplementary family programs that you can be using to just enhance that family life kind of curriculum and the idea of lifelong study. Now, what I would like to do today more than anything else is to alert all of you as catechetical leadership about an upcoming major event that is going to be taking place from October through April of 2021-2022. And it is the preparatory phase one of the Synod of Bishops for 2023. Pope Francis has called for a synod to be held in October of 2023. In order to prepare for that synod, we're going to be having um, different phases, basically three. The first phase is the local level. We as a diocese are going to begin gathering to follow a journey together. It is the journey of what it means to talk to each other. And Pope Francis has used the word synodality. What does it mean for us to listen, to share, to discern? So we as a diocese will begin on April, excuse me, I do that all the time, October the 9th with a special liturgy at St. Joseph's Co. Cathedral. Hopefully, many of you have seen this invitation in the weekly update. So if you have not seen that invitation, please, uh, I will ask again for Christine to send that invitation out to all of the catechetical leaders so that everyone will have a second chance to see that. In that process, we're going to then ask parishes and Christine, could you allow me to share my screen, please? Oops, wrong program. To share my screen, please. Father, you can share your screen. You're a presenter. Oh, OK. Thank you. You're welcome. You may have to come in here to explain to me how to do that. I'm coming. <laughs> you know, if you felt technologically challenged throughout COVID, so did I. Believe me. How do I share my screen? Um, the PowerPoint that was just on. Oh, do I have to close my PowerPoint? PowerPoint. Well, we will get there. I think I have to close the PowerPoint. Because you just. I should have set this up before, but you know. I think I have to close that. Yeah. I think you have to open Teams first. Okay. Yeah. Right, there 
Can you see the PowerPoint? Yes. Okay, wonderful. So there is the, the main slide. The key themes are communion, participation, and mission. Those are what we're going to be reinforcing. And this gamma is a timeline for all of the synod uh, that we're going to be sharing. So you can see we're right here in the preparatory phase. We just received the documents on September 7th. And we're now moving into this phase in October through April. We're moving so Father, into that I don't, phase. Father, I don't see the slide. You can't see just it? like oh. no, just the uh, um, shield. That's his screen. Is that Diocesan shield. That's it. Yes. So it's send it to. Oh, uh, can you see it now? No. No. Yes, no. very yes. small. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for your patience. It can only took it three of us to do that. Can you make so it a little right larger? Uh, I will. Yes. Say he's not. He's How is that? Is that better? Much better. OK, so we're right here in September. And we are moving. I don't think he wants it as a slide, so he's clicking through himself. Oh, slideshow. There, how is that? Perfect. Perfect. So as we move through October to April, we're going to be asking for a number of things from the parishes. So the aim of the Synod is to really learn what journeying means together. And that's going to be the first thing we're going to have to do. We're going to have to translate some of the church speak into everyday, the way we as real people speak. So synodality really is going to be talking about the journey that we're on together. And that's all of us. And then we're going to have to put into practice what it means for us to be a church. So whenever we say that we are church, it really involves those three key themes. Mission, communion, participation. That's what it means for us to be a church. And Pope Francis has over and over again said that our journey must also be with those people who are on the margin. So we are not just interested in hearing from the people we always hear from. Their voices are very important. But we've got to also invite everyone in. And so part of our discussion is going to be how we do that. So the way Pope Francis is suggesting we're going to do that is in the preparatory phase. That's what myself and a committee appointed by the bishop has been working on. With me working on this is Sister Marianne Seton Lepicolo, the uh, diocesan delegate for religious. And with the committee, we have spent the past three weeks since we got the documents trying to get everything past the preparatory phase into what is the discussion phase. That's what we're heading into now. We're heading into those gatherings that will really inform us of what we need to do. And that will lead to the implementation phase. So often we discuss and we discuss and we discuss, and it goes nowhere. That is not the hope of the pontiff. Pope Francis really wants each particular church with the bishop and the people of God to prepare and understand what we must be doing in the 21st century. So the basic question of the process is how we journey together. Now, all of these documents are available on a wonderful Vatican website that we will be sending to you after this meeting. 
please download the document, read it. The fundamental question is on page 30. And then there is a full PowerPoint that I based a lot of this PowerPoint on. But the fundamental question is how we announce the gospel. And who better than you? You do it every day. You do it in each and every one of our programs. We announce the gospel. And how we do that is guided by the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit is inviting us to grow while we journey together. So I'm going to skip a couple of slides to get to the slide that I need, which is not going to let me do that. Here we go. Almost there. So when we talk about journeying together through baptism, confirmation, and the Eucharist, we are all called and gifted by God. Number one priority. And we use those gifts by sharing the mission and the ministry of Jesus. Everything we do is based on scripture. And so we build our communities of faith where we are nurturing and where we belong. So we are trying to create, as I like to say, the peppy perky people of God. That is all dependent on how we pray together. So the whole process, which I'm about to present, is grounded in prayer. Each of the discernment sessions begins with either a Eucharist or a prayer service. That's going to be up to the parish community to decide what they would like to do. So beginning in the months of October and November, we are inviting everybody. We are a diocese of immigrants, and St. Mother Cabrini is the great witness of the missionary activity of our diocese. And Pope Francis encourages us to be disciples in mission. And here we are. So who are the groups we want to get together? Well, all of the councils of the diocese. Each council will have its own listening session. And there are five basic councils for the diocese. And they're listed right there. At the same time, the curia personnel and the clergy will be listened to. Parishioners are going to be are going to be key to this. Now, surprisingly enough, Monsignor Ogle has just walked into the room. He is working as our consultant with Sister Marianne, and he has a message for me. So, Monsignor Ogle, share with us the message. Say hello to the DREs, Monsignor. Hi, DREs. How are you? Uh, I see one DRE. I see one. I'm afraid that if <laughs> oh, you're I doing a PowerPoint. I'm no, afraid I, if I take it off, I'll mess it up. I know that feeling. I know that feeling. Well, I mean, I was going to tell you this, not in front of 35 people, <laughs> but um, I just wanted to let you know that when Bishop, uh, we, we welcome today a new bishop, Bishop uh, uh, Brennan, um, and when he heard about the synod process, he said that those deanery meetings would be an ideal vehicle for him to go around and introduce himself to everybody mm -hmm. and also and get listen. Mm -hmm. So he would like to be included. But that means probably every deanery has to schedule their event at different times. Right. So that's going to be so you'll be hearing from our committee as to when your deaneries will be meeting. And so we were just about to get there. So you're perfectly time on Senior Ogle. Well, that's me once in a while. <laughs> and there you go. Who is vicar for the clergy and a wonderful friend. So well, thank we you. are. We're good friends, and he's doing a great job with this committee. And so, you know, do whatever he tells you. Oh, no, don't do that. Probably <laughs> do the opposite, actually. The opposite probably would be best. Okay, well, I, I, I'm sorry to bring that to you in public, but, I, you know, That's fine. I just came out of another meeting and you're in a meeting, so now you know. Thank you. All right, so you, you'll find out more, I'm sure. Okay. Thank you. 
So crucial to the first phase, which I'm now going to explain, will be parishioners. The parishioners are going to be so important, as will all of our language apostolates, the institutes and ecclesial movements of our diocese, principals and faculties, and certainly catechetical leaders and our catechists. So as you can see, just with the deaneries, there will be 22 listening sessions. We have about 70 language apostolates. So the challenge of setting up these listening sessions is going to be overwhelming. So I do ask you to be very, very patient. And Pope Francis again reminds us that many hands make for light work. So I'm going to be asking for so many of you to really help in our process. So this is the first part. These listening sessions at the parish level. Now, we realize that this may or may not be possible in every parish. And we also realize that given our COVID situation, this is going to be even more difficult. But we're going to ask you as individual parishes to gather parishioners to share either a Eucharist or a prayer service to begin what we hope will be a two hour to two and a half hour session. It is to discern and listen. So our committee will provide a representative who will who will explain the process to everyone in person and another committee member who will be the recorder to help a parishioner record your conversations. Now, there'll be two kinds of conversations. One small group listening and sharing. You can see in the illustration we have people at tables whether they're round tables, lawn tables, short tables, just so they are masked and socially distanced. Then to bring everyone back for a large group listening and sharing session. And then we're going to ask each parish to organize and record, namely take notes on this discernment. And we're going to ask that each parish choose two representatives. So if you have any questions just on this first part, if you could type them now to Nelsa in the chat and we'll try to answer as many of those as we can. I'm afraid I'm going to lose you again unless I just have Christine come in now to show me how to. OK, you know, yeah. Let me end the slideshow here. And do I do this now? No. OK. There, I can see you all again. OK. So does anybody have a question immediately now? Um, St. Clement Pope, is that a hand up? Yes, Father, the question is, are the pastors going to be involved as well? Yes, um, there can be no parish involvement without your pastors. So right now we're looking at two issues that we will present for the pastors. They should be intimately involved in the listening session. But we want a frank and honest discussion. And some people have suggested that it is very hard to do that in, in front of a priest. However, we're going to ask the parishioners to really be honest. So a pastor can only be at one table at a time. So we're going to ask the pastors to float around the different tables to listen to a little bit of everybody. And the reason for the recorder is to be able to inform the pastor and the two representatives about all of the different issues that emerged in the process. Was that was that clear? 
Father, another question from the Youth Minister St. Joseph patron. What will the two representatives of the parish need to do? Uh, let me uh, go back to the next slide for just a minute. And you know, I, I just realized I forgot a very important group. Uh, uh, the youth ministers and the youth and young adults are being invited to their own listening session. I've got to remember to add that to that list. Um, I need to ask Christine to come back in for a minute. So um, any other questions while Christine gets here? Uh, none in the chat. If the oh. listening sessions, sorry, are oh, they are they in uh, the deanery held in the uh, on deanery level or uh, on parish levels? Well, that's you. You jump to my next slide. The um, once the parishes have met, then we're going to ask those pastors, their pastors, and two representatives to meet at the deanery level. Please mute so your mics. We'll gather with pastors and the two representatives. They will likewise share a Eucharist or a prayer service. Now, Bishop Brennan has asked to be at all of these deanery meetings. So we're now going to have to rethink this piece in light of that new information that we just got today. But at the deanery level, then, we are once again going to discern and listen in that same process. We're going to ask all of the different parishes of the deanery to come together and sit in small groups to listen and share, then come back for a large group sharing. And once again, we will provide a facilitator and a note taker to work with the deanery note taker. At the end of that process, it will be up to the deans to then organize and present to the committee a one page executive summary. Based on what were the critical questions that emerged from the deanery. So first parishes. Next deaneries. At the end of the deanery listening sessions. The committee then will gather all of the data. The data will be organized and analyzed, and we will draft a 10 page document for Bishop, now Bishop Brennan's approval, and we will send that document to the USCCB. The USCCB then will begin stage two. That is the national discussion and that will be up to the bishops of the United States to discern that process. Father, so, yes, Nelson. Before you continue to the national process, I have two questions in the chat they're related. Okay. And the questions are um, if who if there will be questions to break the ice or start the conversation and what topics are there to discern? and listen to open the topics. There is the fundamental question, and I can go back to the fundamental question and, and give you some direction on how that is to look, because we are going to provide 10 basic discussion questions just to begin the discussion, and they are going to be based on. Uh, let me go back here and show you that question. So let me give you some of those topics now um, that we are going to be discussing. When you download the document, you're going to see that there are two versions of it. There is the version that looks like a regular PDF file, and then there is a second version that is uh, filled with graphics and artwork. I find that version much more helpful. And the fundamental question is about journeying together. How do we do that at the local level? 
our parish? How do we do it at the level of the diocese and the diocese, the universal church? So we're going to look at what are the fruits of the Holy Spirit? So that means how do we live our lives? So we're going to provide a question about what is it to live our ordinary life? Well, depending on where you live in our diocese, ordinary life looks very different. So that's going to be how do we present the gospel in the 21st century for us who are leading our lives? That is going to lead us into a question about what are the structures? How does our church operate? Are we all institutional? Are we local, regional, universal? All of our structures reflect all of that. And if that's true, we are back to that fundamental question. How can we journey together listening to everyone? And this perspective is very important. So we could ask a very blunt question. Do we feel that the institution listens to us? That's rather blunt. We could ask that in a much more nuanced way. How do we open avenues of discussion so that we can speak out on critical issues? That would be a third kind of question that we would want everyone to be discussing. A fourth question is about celebrating. How is it that we as communities of faith celebrate our sacraments? And do those sacraments reflect our journey together? The fifth question area that we're going to be writing about is responsibility for the mission. Who are the responsible missionary disciples right now? You now, as catechetical leaders, you are primary missionary disciples. So do you feel listened to? Do you feel you can speak out? Do you feel that the sacramental life nourishes you? That is going to lead into a larger dialogue about our church and society. Are we reading the signs of the times? When you read the document, that is one of the phrases Pope Francis uses over and over again. Are we reading the signs of the times? There will also be an ecumenical component. I've asked Father Michael Lynch, who is our vicar for ecumenical events, to put together an ecumenical listening session. We're going to talk about an eighth area, authority and participation. How do we reflect on our roles in the church that all stem from baptism? That is going to lead into a question about discerning and decision making. Do we own the decisions made in our church? And lastly, how it is that we are in formation, formation as lifelong. Sister Alice Michael always used to say from womb to tomb. Right, Alice? You always said womb to tomb. How are we doing in formation? Now, again, I'm hitting you with a lot of information. This is in the document. You will be getting these questions, but we're really here to help you lead that discussion. But you can see how far a net we're throwing out. We could spend a synod on each and every one of these questions, but we're, we're trying to do this in a timely fashion. So did that answer? The question about the deanery and about if we're going I, to be helping you with this. I think so, Father. Father, two more, a uh, few more questions. Two are related. Who will choose the parish representatives and are they, um, will they be the parish council? That is an individual parish decision. So um, that will be up to whoever makes the decisions in your parish, whether it is staff, parish council, 
the parishioners themselves. That will be completely up to you as parish. Okay. And who will organize the event on the parish level? That Another again question. will be up to parish leadership. So um, again, recognizing that some uh, pastors are very hesitant to allow any kind of gathering at all. Others are allowing different sized gatherings. But again, what I like to say to pastors is it's really a math formula. So say you have an auditorium that holds 500 people. Well, socially distanced and masks and masked up, you could get up to uh, 125 people in that room safely. Now, if you have a small space that only holds 40, you can only put 10 people in that room safely. So depending on your parish facilities will depend very much on how all of this is done. So again, local leadership will be very, very important. Father, another no. question from Our Lady of Lourdes. If you finished answering the previous one, I'm sorry if I spoke too soon. Well, I was just to say, I know as a pastor at Holy Trinity, I'll use myself. If we throw out a large umbrella like this and we got 25 people, I would do the Bavarian Dance of Joy down the driveway. So <laughs> parish to parish, it depends on how people respond. You know, if you've got a group that is really responsive. Um, so, you know, so for example, when the Encuentro was meeting, they would have group upon group. They had to have so many meetings because of the response. So that's really going to be up to your local advertising. There is going to be um, Bishop DiMarzio is going to do a spot for currents. I'm doing an article for the for the tablet. We're trying to get publicity out. We sent the invitations out for the opening mass. So um, it just depends on how you can get parishioners involved. Thank you, Father. Father, um, the DRE from Our Lady of Lourdes would like to know if you could go over the timeline of the Synod again, of the whole process. Certainly. Right now, the committee is in the preparatory phase. We are getting everything ready as we get it from Rome. Now we received the first document from Rome on September 7th. We got the liturgy document Sunday for a liturgy that's supposed to take place on October 9th. So we are in Romanita time here. It's not US time where we like to have two or three months in advance to prepare. If we get two weeks, we're, we feel very lucky here. So uh, beginning on October 9th, we will be having the mass. We were going to begin the listening sessions on October 17th. With Bishop Brennan's request today, we will have to rethink that a bit. Beginning then when uh, parishes can begin their listening sessions uh, probably after April 12th when I pre present this to the pastors. You're getting this before the pastors, so please don't run to your pastor. I'll be in big trouble. Wait until the 13th to go to your pastor. Yeah, so the pastors will find out on the 12th of at the first pastors meeting. Um, then your listening sessions should be scheduled in a timely fashion for your deanery meetings. And once Bishop is available to give us the list of dates for those meetings, I will get them to the deans right away. So we have to be a little bit flexible at, at this point right now. Father, what is the date when you will be meeting with the pastors to explain the process, please? October 12th. The, uh, I believe that is a Wednesday after the October holiday. It's a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. Thank you. 
Right. So Sister Melba, did that answer your question? The pastors are going to be informed at the pastors meeting on October 12th. Any other questions? You'll be getting more. Uh, so no one panic. Who's panicking? Show of hands if you're starting to panic. Don't panic. No one panic. Oh, come on. Rose of Lima can handle anything. <laughs> Nothing can come your way that you can't handle. Um, I don't say Nancy were low. Our DRE is not on the screen. I'm sure she's ready to kill me by this point, but another whole story for a day later. Um, who is not panicking about all this? Thank you, Deacon Jim. Come on, no one panic. All right, I, Immaculate Conception in Astoria can do anything. Um, if there are no more questions on the Thank Synod. You, Father, you know. <laughs> who am I looking at? Marilyn. Oh, Marilyn, there you are. <laughs> Thank you for the compliment. <laughs> I'm You're welcome. I'm panicking. Sister Ellis Michael can do anything. Y'all can do anything. The Holy Spirit is in charge. That's it. The Holy Spirit. And, and I really, my prayer is, you know, I love change. I'm a big change guy. I love to shake things up. I don't like to do the same thing twice. So I'm really hoping this will be a, like a 10 point earthquake on the Richter scale for the church. Just the Holy Spirit really shakes everything up. Now, having said that, I'm going to go to one of the best rule followers I know, who is tries her best to keep me organized. But before I do that, I, I made a mistake at the very beginning. We have a new staff member that some of you may have already met, Father Emil Parafinuek, whose name I never say right, who is our new director for youth ministry. So Father Emil uh, will be presenting to you in a little while, uh, but I'm gonna turn this over now to Nelsa, who is going to discuss how the opening of the year went with everyone. So thank you very much, Nelsa. Hello, so Father, you are asking me to tell everyone or to ask everyone. So I have visited some of you and some of you have been in touch with me and my colleagues have also been visiting parishes and we've been getting some feedback from you on how things are going. But as we are gathered here today, I'd like to know how many of you are already meeting in person and since we're at the end of the month, I would assume most of you have started your programs. Great. And how many of you are vir um, virtual only because you're unable to keep the social distancing requirements? Some of you are hybrid. Okay, very good, yes. Father, are you still here? No, okay, I guess he's not. Um, 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 yeah, will we have time to have one or two people share or just um, put the um, comments in the in the chat? Um, why don't we put comments in the chat right now so that we can uh, get everybody, uh, anybody who would like to share, and then we're having deanery meetings. So in the deanery meetings, we can do some more of that in-person sharing. I know we had a great meeting at Corpus Christi with the DREs from that deanery. It was a wonderful meeting. So as we get our deanery meeting scheduled, we'll be able to do more in-person sharing. Okay, great. So I'm seeing that 
we have a combination of you know, programs of how things, different models in person, hybrid and virtual only. So um, that's very good. Are there any specific challenges that you're encountering? If you want to chat that, uh, put it in the chat, that would be helpful. The chat will be available to us later to look at carefully. Uh oh, so some of you already have had to quarantine some of your your sessions. Wow. Yes. And that's with the daily health screening and all the other protocols being kept in place. OK. Someone asked, can listening sessions be done in hybrid? I'm not sure what you mean by that, Teresa. Uh, probably going back to the synod. Um, oh, OK. <laughs> it, you know, and uh, um, with the Zoom um, and Teams, you can set up small group discussions, but that would really be the hope that you would be able to put people into small groups. It can be done virtually, um, but it takes just a little bit more planning and coordination. I'm seeing a comment about um, the sessions and health assessment is a challenge. Yes, it is, but it is very important and required. We must do that for everyone's safety. Has everyone been able to set up uh, QR codes? It just moves that process along a lot faster if you can set up the QR codes. And if you need help with that, please call Christine. Are um, any is anyone experiencing um, some negative feedback from parents that they're you know um, not happy about in person? If you are having the in person program this year. So. Oh, yeah, that was far. <laughs> Someone is asking about the sanitizers. I don't know. I guess if you haven't received them, they're uh, not Christine, ready. <laughs> yeah, Christine, could you talk about the sanitizers for a minute? Okay, fine. Christine, do you know about the sanitizers? Someone oh, is inquiring. Yeah. She's joining us in a second. I'm okay. seeing some comments that um, sorry, Father. Um, so sanitizers have already started to be delivered. Um, a few parishes received it this morning. They are trying to do it in sections of the deanery. So I've spent last night trying to Google map everybody's location to see who's close enough <laughs> to put them in a group. Not an easy task, um, but I will be sending out emails. So I started sending out emails letting you know it could be today or tomorrow. Then I, when I got a confirmed time, it'll be tomorrow. So the way they're doing it is this is all volunteer trucks and drivers that are delivering it. So we're really only getting about 24 hour, 36 hour notice of when they're coming. So right now, I believe um, St. Fortunata, St. Rita, Salve Regina received this today, and St. Michael, St. Malachi. Tomorrow um, is uh, Mary Mother of the Church has gone to pick it up themselves. So arrangements are being made. I'm sending out emails. So just don't look at the email that says hand sanitizer delivery and think it has nothing to do with you because it's specifically to you to let you know of the delivery. They are saying the window is from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., but they are trying to get everybody in before 12, just so that you know. It's just the driving and traffic might be the issue from one parish to the other, and they're trying to cover about six to eight parishes per trip. So they're really getting them out there. So you just have to have your, your manpower ready or when I, you know, on a moment's notice, basically, I'll try to let you know the day before so that you have the people or somebody to accept it. And you all seen the sizes of the pallets, so they're pretty big. You can't miss it. 
OK, any other questions? No, good. OK, in the chat I'm seeing about uh, messages that parents are very grateful for all the efforts to keep fam the children safe and everyone is cooperating. Some don't want to send the children to the in person settings, so they are doing virtual. So that's great that you are giving them that option. And um, I just want to comment while I have you here that if you need any help, if you're having any specific situations that you want to contact me, um, I'd be more than happy uh, to try to help you resolve those issues, either me or Father Dubino. Um, but I, I think I would be a good place to start. Absolutely, and it is our hope this year that Nelsa Joanne Roa and Kristen uh, Christian Rada will be in the field much more than ever before. Um, I keep saying that I, I really want them to be ambassadors for the office in the field. Um, you may see me bouncing around, but I bounce around the diocese so much as it is that just wave as I drive by. Um, and speaking of driving by, uh, Christian had to leave early. Are you still with us, Christian? Yes, Father, I'm still here. How would you like to give a little family life update before you have to leave? Uh, sure. So um, with regards to, uh, to family life, so the RCL Benzinger and Loyola Press um, are still the preferred methods for for the family catechesis. Um, I've spoken to a couple of uh, parishes already to the that have requested um, more training with regards to those particular programs. I've reached out to RCL and Loyola to provide additional training, um, and I'm just waiting for the dates and times for uh, for the schedules. But in the YouTube channel for the Secretariat, we posted up the last training sessions from RCL and Loyola Press. So if you wanted to look at those particular training sessions beforehand, so you have a better grasp of what uh, what do um, these two programs are in are, are entailing with regards to family catechesis. Um, you can certainly certainly do that, but just be on the lookout for notice of when are the um, the training sessions for uh, family catechesis. OK, thank you, Father. Thank you, Christian. Father Emil, there you are. How would you like to introduce yourself, Father Emil? Uh, my name is Father Emil Parafinuk. Father Joe, so it's your pronunciation is as good as my in English in many times. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, I'm very happy that I can be here. Uh, I met all of you, I think, during different meetings. Uh, I'm responsible now for um, youth ministry and young adults ministry in the Diocese of Brooklyn. I'm very happy and, and I'm very excited because of that. Uh, so if I can give you now some update about uh, youth ministry program uh, in our diocese, I'm going to do that now. The most important event in next uh, two months will be Christ the King Solemnity. As you know, Pope Francis uh, changed the a date of Virtue Day uh, in a diocese on a diocesan level from Palm Sunday to Christ the King Solemnity. In our diocese, uh, uh, this celebration will be very simple uh, because it will be just on Sunday, 20th November. In the evening, we still don't know a time we are we are working on it. It will be a, a, a gathering for young people from the diocese in one place, probably in Queens. I don't know. I know that sometimes for people from Brooklyn, it's uh, like to cross a border to go from Brooklyn to Queens. But uh, uh, we have to choose just one place, and it probably will be in Queens. Uh, but on a Sunday, 21st, the Christ the King Solemnity. We would like to invite all parishes to have a special mass for young people in the parish and a blessing for youth ministers and volunteers working with young people. Uh, what is very important for me when I am talking about uh, young people, uh, I'm talking not only about teenagers, but young adults too. So it's uh, very important for us. Uh, a few, uh, yes, yesterday, or, the, or yes, I think uh, on Monday, sorry. Uh, Holy Father, 
uh, announced a message for this World Youth Day, which is very important. Uh, and Pope Francis reminds that World Youth Day uh, and World Youth Days on a diocesan and the international level uh, is not a pastoral event, but it's a tool for youth ministry. It's very important uh, for us. Of course, we are planning a, a synodal session for uh, young people and youth ministers. A very important uh, thing for us will be uh, where today in Lisbon in 2023. We, st we are starting our preparation with Lucy. I think she's here. Uh, here to, uh, we, we prepare. We are preparing website for young people. So we pre before we didn't have a website for young people. Now uh, we would like to have a website. We, I believe that useful even for you with uh, some resources for some infos where youth groups are, uh, when uh, you can send uh, young people uh, to the groups. Uh, and uh, the last important thing I would like to share with you is a pilgrimage uh, of uh, copies of the symbols of our Tuesdays. Uh, everything will be explained in the next few months. We probably start this pilgrimage from uh, uh, from spring. We plan to do it from uh, fall, but because of the COVID situation, it was imp uh, impossible. So we are going to start it, uh, start this pilgrimage uh, in, uh, in spring. Uh, so uh, we'll provide you much more information when we will be closer to the date. Uh, and uh, of course, Lucy, if you are here, she's uh, responsible uh, for uh, youth ministry initiative. She coordinates all youth ministers in the diocese. Uh, I don't know if you want to say something. Uh, maybe I don't know if I uh, said everything. Uh, oh, I see <laughs> that you... Father, yes. <laughs> I'm here though. Uh, no, yeah. just thank you for everything and thank you everyone. And thanks to the youth ministers for participating as well. But yeah, I think you got everything. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, and uh, once more, uh, thank you for your service and for your help to, to young people. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, both Lucy and uh, Father Emil. Uh, now, for the next, say, 10 minutes or so, how would uh, any questions, any questions at all? Um, as I said before, we really want to be in the field with you. Please don't hesitate to let us know. Please don't tell your pastors about the synod yet. Cover my bases for me. I get in enough trouble as it is. Any questions? Um, Father, before we move to the questions, if I can give a little um, some updates to sure. our DREs. Hello, everybody. I want to specifically welcome the new DREs. We have quite a few, um, over 10 of them um, this year. Most of you are, most of them are present at this meeting, so welcome. And um, just want to make a, uh, give everyone a reminder that at the end of October, October 31st, the diocesan um, report called Current Catechist is due. The portal is already ready for you to start inputting that information. So if you have it, please go to the portal and fill out the current catechist report, which is the report that asks for the number of children enrolled, how many catechists are there, are working with you and are volunteering and their Virtus training information. Looking forward to um, the new year, Father mentioned that we're hoping to have in-person gatherings and specifically the Sadlier annual gathering. So save your, you know, the date of April 8th. Let's see, did I get that right? Um, April 8th. No, March 8th, sorry about that. March 8th at ICC, I will be sending a flyer to save the date um, soon. And um, the, the topic will be on the new directory for catechesis. So um, that came out last year, but many of you perhaps haven't read it yet or um, gotten a hold of it. So that is going to be the topic. So please save the date March 8th. Thank you. So we can take any general questions as father had said. 
Um, the question from St. Andrew Avellino, what is the deadline again for current catechists? Um, could, could you click on and explain a little bit about that, please? Um, sure. The current catechist is a report that um, all DREs and coordinators have to complete every year. The deadline for that report is October 31st. Um, every DRE should have um, credentials um, to log in to that um, report. It's in the diocesan portal. If any of you, especially the new DREs, don't know how to access that, um, the portal, just be in touch with me by email or give me a call and I will be able to walk you through the process. Any other questions? Yes. No, no, so I have a question. For some reason, my chat is not working. It's just spinning, so I apologize if I um, cut in front of someone else who had a chat question. This is Janine from Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament. Yes. My, my first question is, how long do we need to hold on to the health forms? So as the children walk in each week, you know, I make sure it's filled out and signed, and then I've been filing them. So um, as long as, you know, nothing comes up within that week that we need to search back in, I I'm wondering how long um, should I keep that paper file? Uh, my, my suggestion would be this to because the the time frame, the time frame for spreading COVID could be anywhere from five days to two weeks. That would be the general rule of thumb. I would say just so you don't make yourself crazy. One month, so come come like October. You haven't had anything from September out, you know, out goes September. Ideally, if you if this were electronic, that would be the best thing because then you don't have any of the paper. But I realize that's really hard. You know. The online if you're using the online form. Th then you're good to go. It's all that paper, just paper after paper. Father Gibino, Rebecca from St. Sebastian's is asking, will there be deanery meetings with youth ministers? Um, yes. Uh, Father Emil and Lucia will be getting on that one. They'll be organizing that. And that that really varies from deanery to deanery because some deaneries have larger numbers. Some deaneries have no youth ministers. So that's one of those. Where, where are we in the diocese? And, and just so you know, if it's a morning deanery meeting, I really like those Dunkin Donut all chocolate glazed ones. They're my favorite. So don't buy that one. Do not have that one there. See, because if it's not there, I won't eat it. So <laughs> Christine, you have a question? Actually, what um, I wanted to make a comment on. Hold on, because this your the mic is coming back at me. Speaker was what do you call it? Um now you made me forget because you brought up Dunkin' Donuts and I'm hungry. <laughs> I remember. Oh no, it was that they, if you have a problem with the electronic part, you should be contacting IT because they'll help you um, use your credentials for it in order to have it in Microsoft Forms. So they'll help you set it up and then you can send it out and you can make it a year's worth of data that's being saved there. And so you don't have to worry about so much paper with it, but these meetings that father sets up are really important because like today you, you got a heads up above everybody else. You found out live that there was major changes and that the new bishop is going to be popping in. But if you don't check your outlook, you won't know that there's a bishop at your door. <laughs> You'll be the one with the surprise. So we really need to focus on outlook. 
and keep in mind if you're having your outlook forwarded to gmail or yahoo you can't get into the links of the weekly updates so you won't really see those so you need to at least go on the outlook to see the weekly updates because that's real important nelson posts things father is always posting things so even if you want to ignore my emails look at the weekly update uh, and one thing that will be coming up in October, uh, as you know, there's always been a rosary rally and we are encouraging everyone to, for your programs, do something in the month of October with the rosary. We are going to be broadcasting live on October 7th at 11 o'clock, the veneration of the relic of blessed Carlo Acuti who you know is the millennial saint, a 15 year old who was just blessed, uh, just made a blessed. That is going to be taped and available to show to your program in your programs. We're also working on a video of the life of Blessed Carlo. That would be a great um, lesson plan for November also. So those two things are coming up. And since we have a 15 year old new blessed, uh, it would be great. Um, to, to share his life with our, especially our confirmation classes. So all of that would be great for you to be using. You should also have received the lesson plans for the new social um, teachings curriculum. Uh, some parents have been asking if this is radical race theory. Of course it is not. It is the social teaching of the church that goes back to Cain and Abel. When Cain murdered Abel, the Lord did not impose capital punishment on him. It's the social justice teaching of the church that includes the prophets, the saints, everyone, and emphasizing the more modern and contemporary from Leo the 13th all the way to Pope Francis. So as parents are talking to you, those monthly suggestions are to enhance your programs and that goes hand in hand with the new religion curriculum for the academies. I see that Sister Francesca had her hand up. Oh, OK. Do no, you no, have a question, I, I Sister? Think, no, maybe that was a mistake. Sorry. OK. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? I think Marilyn wanted to know what you'd like. We know you like dun um, Dunkin Donuts for breakfast, but for tomorrow's meeting in the afternoon. <laughs> um, well, coffee <laughs> is always appropriate. And then Marilyn, you can surprise me. <laughs> But I don't know that Dunkin Donuts are just for breakfast. They could be an all day food. Italian pastries. Italian pastries are always appropriate. <laughs> always, except during Lent. Oh, yes. Okay. Except during Lent. Casata al forno. Ah. <laughs> Anything else? Well, we're going to hopefully have more of these meetings during the year, and we are really hoping to be able to have the Advent prayer gathering in person this year. So um, we're really hoping that by December 1st, a lot of the restrictions will have been lifted and changed and we'll be in a better place. Uh, one of the things that we are encouraging we're not demanding, we can't mandate this, so please, is if your catechists are willing to be vaccinated, we are encouraging vaccination, and there are no religious exemptions being given in the Diocese of Brooklyn. So if the catechist asks about a religious exemption, the answer is no, we are not giving them. Um, because Pope Francis basically has said there is nothing out of line with the vaccination and the teaching of the church. 
and I just got my flu shot today. So I haven't grown a second head yet. <laughs> so COVID vaccine and flu shot, you're safe. I have a question about the versus training for um, for a, yeah for a um, catechist under 18 years old. Yes, I I see that there is required for them to do the the session or the training healthy relationships for teens at the virtues virtues.org website but mm -hmm. um i can't find this um program this safety program for for teenagers for vol volunteers under age 18 18. Right. that would be if you call marilyn quinn at the safe environment office that is yes. now at Douglaston at Immaculate Conception, okay. she will be able to help you find that website. Okay. Yes. Mary Ellen Quinn. Mary Ellen Quinn, I'm sorry. Thank you. Or call Nelsa and Nelsa will be able to help you. Of course. Well, thank you all very, very much. Um, I'm going to ask Nelsa to end us in prayer this afternoon. Yes, of course, Father. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful autumn day and for all the blessings that you pour down on your people. We ask you to fill us, continue filling us with hope and joy as we continue this new catechetical year and look forward to the leadership of a new bishop and look forward to serving our families and the children in the religious education programs. Continue to bless us, give us wisdom, health, and just keep us together as your family in the Lord. And we ask this through Jesus and through the intercession of our Blessed Mother. And together we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you, Blessed, you, are you Blessed is your fruit, the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy oh. Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.